Hello class, I'm Dr. Brown, here to give you a clear, concise information about the contributions of ancient Greece in the fields of language, drama, and literature. I brought along some special learning assistance to get this information through your thick skulls. Here you go, idiots. Stop talking! Here to tell us about the great contributions in the field of language, we have Dr. Moore! Oh, thank you! You guys are too kind! No, 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 hold your applause until I've turned on, really, really, no, no, okay, all right, oh, no, 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 you're too kind, oh, thank you, oh, really, too much, really, oh, there's a line here that's not being said yet. Uh, Dr. Moore? What? Demon! Ah! Oh. oh, yes, the Greek language. Many of us did not realize how vital the Greek language was to the formation of our own language. <sighs> oh. For example, oh. Uh, for example, the Greek word hippos means horse, which is where we get the words hippopotamus and hippogriff. Apparently, the Greeks thought that the hippopotamus was a horse. <sighs> the horse of the African plains, of the watering hole. Oh, uh. Dr. Moore! Question mark! What? <sighs> Dr. Moore was a hippogriff. Oh. What of the demonic creatures of Harry Potter? Meaning a god gives us the words theism, theology, theocracy, and atheism. <sighs> Demon! Ah! Uh, next, we have a genuine siren here to talk to you about ancient Greece literature. Hello, my name is Cindy. Cindy the Siren. I lure them into their doom with my sizzling beauty. I was actually featured in one of Homer's epics, The Odyssey. Homer is arguably the greatest, most famous Greek author of all time. His writings are considered to be the most accurate picture of Greece during the time of Homer's life. Many other Greek poets, such as Sappho, Pindar, <laughs> have been. <laughs> ah, have been used by contemporary authors in their writings. <coughs> you have a line, sweetie. You really do have a line. <laughs> okay, this is a good outtake. Uh, next, we have a genuine siren here to talk to you about Greek literature. Hello. My name is Cindy, Cindy the Siren. I lure men to their doom with my sizzling beauty. I was actually featured in one of Homer's epics, The Odyssey. Homer is arguably the greatest, most famous Greek author of all time. His writings are considered to be the most accurate picture of Greece during the time of Homer's life. Many other Greek poets, such as Sappho and Pindar, <laughs> his writings are considered to be the most accurate picture of Greece during the, little, during the time of Homer's life. Many other Greek poets, such as Sappho and Pindar, have been used by their contemporary authors in their writings. Cindy? I thought I'd never see you again. Oh, Tommy. Oh, she has such beautiful eyes. Oh. <laughs> it's your lie. Now that Cindy has learned Dr. Moore to a watery grave, let's explore the world of Greek drama. Many Greek plays no longer survive, but the Greek forms of drama are responsible for the ways our movies are performed. For example, the Greeks gave us the character Scenix Erratus, which means angry old man. <coughs> Dr. Moore. Anyway, the prominent Greek playwright Aristophanes was shaped 
who shaped the new forms of comedies such as parodies. Three more were prominent playwrights were Sophocles, Euphrid, Euripides, and Achilles. All of them changed the ways plays were performed. Some of their plays are still popular and performed today. Greek dramatists pretty much shaped the way drama is seen in the United States and around the world. I'm a lady, I'm a lady, I'm a lady, yeah. Question mark! <laughs> Someone has vines here. Hello, I'm Zeus, chief of the gods of ancient Greece. I am here to tell you about drama in ancient Greece. At the early Greek festivals, the actors, directors, and dramatists were not all the same per were all the same person, sorry. Later, only three actors could be used in each play. After some time, non-speaking roles were allowed to perform on stage. Because of the limited number of actors allowed on stage, the chorus evolved into a very active part of Greek theater. Though the number of people in the chorus is not clear, the chorus oh. spell it here. The chorus was given as many as half of the total lines of the play. Music was often played during the chorus's delivery of the lines, although few of the written tragedies from this time remain. The themes and accomplishments from Greek tragedy still resonate to contemporary audiences. The term tragedy literally means goat song. After the festival's participants, goat-like dancing around sacrificial goats for prizes took place. Most Greek tragedies are based on mythology or history and deal with the character's search for the meaning of life and the nature of the gods. Most tragedies that have survived from this period begin with a prologue that gives the audience exposition into the following action. The chorus then introduces a period called the paradox. During this time, introductions to characters are made Exposition is given, and a mood is established! The final scene is called the Exodus, when the characters on all the chorus depart. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm a lady, I'm a lady, I'm a lady, I'm a lady. I'm a lady.